Good afternoon. I'm Greg Hart, Chair of the Santa Barbara County Board of Supervisors. We're here once again to provide the most up-to-date information about the COVID-19 local response. This press conference is being broadcast on County Television Channel 20 and the county's YouTube page. The meeting is being interpreted in American Sign Language by Joe Black, and a Spanish language interpretation by Carlos Saraceda is available on the county's website and the YouTube page shortly after we conclude this press conference. Our lives have been so dramatically upended these past few weeks, it's very hard to focus on anything other than the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm saddened to report we now have our first COVID-19 death in Santa Barbara County. We've heard about many deaths around the world from this pandemic, but that doesn't take away from the pain we now feel as a community in this tragic moment. Our hearts go out to the family and friends who are grieving the loss of their loved one today. The seriousness of this moment requires us to pay special attention to the message from our county's public health officials. The simple message we repeat every day remains the same and is more critical than ever. We all must pay strict attention to three simple but important adjustments to our daily routines. Number one, stay home. If you must go out, stay at least six feet away from other people. Number two, wash your hands regularly, don't touch your face, and disinfect surfaces. Number three, if you feel sick, immediately isolate yourself at home. If your symptoms worsen, call your medical provider and follow their advice. These three simple steps are what we're asking everyone to know and do. Please share this powerful and very important message with your family, friends, and loved ones. If we all work together, we can slow the spread of the virus just enough to give us time to prepare our medical system to handle the surge of patients that will need extra care. We have one of the best medical systems for care in the state of California. Dedicated nurses, doctors, support staff, hospital and clinic administrators are all working heroically to take care of patients. The county's public health department is collaborating with our local hospitals and community volunteers to create new hospital capacity to treat patients. We all care about each other deeply and take pride in helping others. This is the most important moment in our lives. If we all take personal responsibility for our own actions, we can protect our community's well-being and health. We are up to this job and we will succeed. If we do this very well, your loved ones or someone else may not need medical care. Please take this very seriously. Next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Henning Anzorg, the county's public health officer. Thank you, Supervisor Hart. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm saddened to hear that we had our first COVID-19 related death in Santa Barbara County today. A North County resident in their 60s with underlying health problems who was hospitalized succumbed to the viral illness today. I would like to share my deepest condolences with our community members, families, and friends on this tragic loss. In addition, today we are reporting 12 new cases of COVID-19. These cases are in various cities and areas in our county and uh, the details will be shared on our website, publichealthsbc.org, and in a press release. I would like to share that the Public Health Department is actively securing sites that can receive additional patients once our local hospitals are exceeding their capacities. Currently, our hospitals are not filled to maximal capacity and all sites have the ability to expand their volume to surge capacity once that would become necessary. Even though we do not expect to need alternate care sites before the end of April or May, we will be ready to receive a small amount of additional patients as soon as next week at the old Lompoc Hospital, which will open its doors to our overflow patients. 
We are actively working to secure sites in the northern part of the county as well as in the Santa Barbara area. These alternate sites could be set up or will be set up as step-down units for hospitalized patients until they have fully recovered. Governor Newsom has encouraged doctors, nurses, paramedics, and other healthcare professionals to please sign up for the California Health Corps. We already had about 40 professionals sign up over the last two weeks, just alone here in our county. And we are grateful to everybody who offers their service at this time. If you are a health professional and do want to help, please go to covid19.ca.gov slash health core for more information and to sign up. I have been informed that all commercial lab testing sites, Quest, LabCorp, and Sonic, have all greatly accelerated their turnaround time for testing to about 48 hours, which is incredibly helpful in making our disease control interventions more timely and effective. We have received many questions about the resources we have available, and I'd like to share that currently we have 85 functional ventilators at our disposal, and we do have 25 surge ventilators that have been distributed to hospitals and are currently out being serviced and expected back very soon. We are working with state and FEMA partners on receiving more of these valuable ventilators. In addition, the question of wearing a face covering mask for the general public has been discussed again in the media and is currently reviewed by the CDC. Many hospitals across the nation have already started to make it a mandatory for everybody, including patients, employees, and everybody on their premises to wear masks at all times while at the hospitals. We would request that community members who want to protect themselves and others by wearing a face covering mask to please abstain from hoarding medical grade face masks so that our healthcare facilities will be able to have access to the much needed protective gear. In closing, let me emphasize again that everybody in our community is making a difference with our physical distancing efforts to limit the spread of this virus. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anzorg. Next up will be Dr. Vaughn Do Reynoso, the Director of the County Public Health Department. I'd like to extend my heartfelt sympathies for the families, for the family and friends of our fellow community members who have just passed. Now more than ever, it is critical that we continue practicing physical distancing. As our public health team has mentioned previously, physical distancing is the greatest factor in determining how much we can flatten the curve of illness in our community. If we can commit to staying home as much as possible, isolate ourselves when we become sick, and stay six feet apart from each other when out, we will save lives in Santa Barbara County. Please know that your local public health team remains fully committed to protecting your health, especially during this trying and rapidly changing time. We thank you for continuing to stand strong together while safely apart. Thank you. Next, I invited um, Elena Walzak, who's the Executive Director of CALM, to join us today. CALM is a nonprofit community organization in Santa Barbara County that specializes in the prevention and treatment of childhood trauma through family strengthening and support. Elena's message today is especially important as families and children are experiencing stress from the COVID-19 outbreak. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Supervisor Hart. Um, I too am saddened to hear of this news today and I'm here to really emphasize the mental health needs that our county is facing 
during such a um, difficult and challenging time across the globe. Um, I was asked specifically to speak to the rising domestic violence spikes that we're seeing in our county and across the nation. Um, we also know that childhood trauma and child abuse numbers are rising, and this makes sense because there's such stress and anxiety going on, and now as we've had our first fatality, the, the rising levels of grief and fear that will be happening across the county. So um, Sheriff Bill Brown mentioned last week about domestic disturbance being the crime that was increasing when other crimes were decreasing. Child Welfare Service is actually seeing a decrease in uh, reports of child abuse, but this is simply because the professionals that usually have their eyes on kids right now, uh, elementary school teachers and preschool teachers, are not with students, and students are sheltering in place at home. And we know that not all homes are safe for every child. So um, we're asking folks to please check in with your loved ones, with your family members. Please, as neighbors, be aware that there may be children that need help. And even those of us who are parents in healthy circumstances, the stressors of this situation right now are intense. So a few tips that I want to offer. First of all, Calm is here. So you can go to our website, wwwcalm 4 kids the number 4kids.org, or you can call our phone line, 965 two three seven six if you need any support or resources um, but during these difficult times there's so much being asked of parents to take care of children and to teach children and to support them while we're also struggling with some of the greatest stressors of our time so taking breaks from the news um, this is very important information but it can really be triggering for people that are, are suffering from trauma or from grief um, spending time in nature while practicing social distancing, um, checking in, as I mentioned, with family and friends, and, and trying to spend quality time with children. For, for kids, the most important factor for building resilience is a healthy connection to a loving adult. So even though we're all juggling working from home, we're juggling economic hardship, we're juggling loss and grief, if we can take breaks throughout our day and spend time with children, that's really, really very important right now. If anyone does see something or needs to provide support to a family member or to a neighbor, you can call Child Welfare Services. Their number is 1-800-367-0166. But again, I just wanted to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation to let the community know that our clinicians who are available in English and Spanish, we're here, we're providing services. All of our clinical offerings have been moved to telehealth. So we have HIPAA compliant phone and video conference options, and we know that many families are struggling. So please reach out if we can be of support. Thank you very much for your important work and all the team at Calm and uh, for sharing this information with us today. Next, we'll take questions um, from folks in the room. Uh, Tracy Lair, please come up to the microphone. I just want to note that I have one of the cheaper masks and I keep wearing them and I'm waiting for the day that you might be wearing them. But my question is to Dr. Ansorg, um, can you tell us how long this uh, man was in the ICU or, or, you know, can you tell us anything about his care? Well, all I'm um, really at liberty to share is that um, the death occurred at Marion Hospital in a person in their 60s with underlying health conditions who uh, was in intensive care and on a ventilator. Can you tell other people that, you know, might have to have a better outcome, what any advice for them, like someone in that age group with an underlying condition? The advice I can give is really avoid to catch the virus. So. That's why the physical distancing is so important. Once you catch the virus, there's really no way of knowing how severe the illness can become. Obviously, if somebody has underlying health conditions, you know, their immune system is weaker, and it's more likely that they have a more severe uh, form of the disease. And I have one for Calm. Um, at this point, there's family grieving. 
in this circle if, around Marion, do you have any tips for that community? Because that's going to be, you know, the first. This is there's been five deaths I think in Ventura, and this is the first for this area. Yeah, this is going to be a really big tipping point for our county. Um, it's going to cause a lot of grief and panic. We do have a calm office in Santa Maria, so folks could contact that office for resource and referral. But there is also hospice, of course, uh, in Santa Barbara that does provide services throughout the county. Um, I think we're going to see a new wave of this trauma as we move more deeply into grief. And we're going to, the community as a whole, the county as a whole is going to start going through the stages of grief as we hear of these losses. So that's, that's, that's where we're entering. Other questions? Mr. Molina? Maybe I missed it, but did you give the rundown again of the number of people who are hospitalized and those who are in the ICU? I have that information. So this is data as of uh, noon today. We have 111 cases, and of that, 65 are recovering at home, 17 are recovering in the hospital. Of that number, 13 is in the ICU, and 23 are fully recovered and we are awaiting for information on six. Okay, and since you identified the, the um, death as being at Marion, are you able to say how many are at Cottage Health versus how many are in Mar Marion Medical Center, those who are hospitalized? No. Any other questions here in the room? All right, then we will go to Mr. Dreyfus, did yeah. you? Yep. Um, have we received more tests, or are we still at the original number, Santa Barbara County? Do you mean tests performed? No, just testing kits, because I know we were short early on, and we only had a certain amount. Have we gotten more tests, and have we been testing more people, as opposed to right. in the beginning where we had limited supply, so we were saving them for special people? Sure, so we are still testing based on the priority groups. And uh, I can tell you that while I don't have the exact number of tests available, that we have not had an issue with testing everyone who needs to be tested in the priority group. Any other questions here in the room? Next, we'll go to questions on the telephone line. Malia Martin with the Santa Maria Sun, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions. First, I'm um, curious whether the county will uh, share any um, other COVID-19 demographics besides the age ranges of the patients, such as uh, race or gender demographics? At this time, um, we are not sharing that information. Okay, thank you. And um, my other question is, what COVID-19 resources are there for um, Spanish speakers and how are those resources being disseminated to those communities? We, our website, publichealthsbc.org is fully translated in Spanish. And in addition, we have our frequently asked questions. We are one of the first few counties to be able to have that up in Spanish. Um, we are also creating videos that will be bilingual as well as bicultural um, to disseminate. We are partnering up with UCSB and a variety of community organizations to disseminate that information as well. And in addition, in addition, oh, all, all of our press conferences are also translated into Spanish and posted on the county's public health website. Great. Um, and I'm just, lastly, I'm curious about, I know the Ready SBC website has um, some new information on COVID-19 up on there. Will there, there be Spanish translation or other language translation for that as well eventually? Yes. Yes, that is Thank coming you. this week. Some, yes. some of that information is available currently in Spanish on the COVID-19 public health website. Thank you. Any other questions on the telephone? Laura Place from Santa Maria Times. Hello, I was wondering um, if you can tell us when the Santa Barbara County Public Health Lab 
will be able to um, begin testing at that facility. We are in a uh, very aggressive pursuit of uh, purchasing rapid tests from a company, and uh, we are essentially any day now. We anticipate once we receive the shipment, we will uh, be up and running within a week. However, uh, we are waiting for that shipment. Okay, and then once that shipment is received, whenever that may be, will the county continue to utilize the Ventura and um, Slow County Public Health Labs for testing as well? So while we will have the capacity to produce rapid tests, there's still um, a limited amount. So we will continue to rely on our regional partners as well as the state, especially as cases, at, uh, as we in see an increase in cases that need to be tested. Okay. And then just one last clarifying question about that. I'm sorry if you already said it, I, I didn't catch it, but how many um, testing kits, rapid testing kits are being ordered um, by the county for their public health lab? We have requested 200. Okay. All right, that's all my questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Laura. Now we're going to Reza with San Inez Valley Star. Hi everyone, thank you so much for um, being here and letting us know about this. Um, I am wondering if there's a particular type of um, illnesses, um, you know, underlying health issues that are um, you're seeing more of than others, like uh, asthma or, uh, you know. Yeah, I'm happy illnesses to. Illnesses like that. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm happy to speak to that. So any condition that weakens the immune system will m make the body um, vulnerable to fight a viral illness. So that could be anything from severe kidney disease, heart failure, diabetes mellitus, um, somebody who needs to take medications to suppress the immune system because they have a transplant, or because they have an autoimmune disease that requires this kind of medication is also more at risk. There are few congenital conditions where people have a weakened immune system from birth. And age is uh, not a disease, it uh, hits all of us. However, our senior citizens are more at risk as well. Mortality goes up drastically after age 75. So that is also because the immune system is weaker and the body is less resilient to recover from a severe viral illness. Thank you, that was all my questions. Thank you very much, we have no more questions on the phone. All right, well that will conclude our press conference today. We'll be having another press conference tomorrow at 4.30. There immediately upon our conclusion, there will be a, a scroll on the television screen that has important information and website contact information, so you can take your time to copy down those uh, phone numbers and website addresses and get additional information through those sources. Thank you very much.